Hi, welcome to the Living in Naples channel. I'm James Headley. Today is going to be my last video, for now at least, touching on the impacts from the NAR settlement that has the potential for some major impacts for buyers and sellers. While I would certainly encourage you to check out those other videos as well, this episode is going to pick up from where I left off in the last buyer-focused video and provide some words of caution slash advice to help you avoid making short-sighted decisions that have the potential to cost you money when buying a home in this new environment. Before doing so, uh, let me thank you as always for taking the time to subscribe, share, and like this channel and its content. And now, on to those ways buyers can exercise caution in this new environment. Number one, don't assume that going to the listing agent is the answer. Uh, the thought may have crossed your mind that if you're going to have to sign an agreement up front to work with an agent and potentially compensate them directly if the seller is opting not to offer a cooperating commission, uh, why not cut out the middleman, so to say, uh, and just go directly to the listing agent? Aside from the scenarios that I shared in my recent videos that show the impact on a buyer's uh, net expenditure on a home is not likely to be significantly different in many, if not most cases, uh, keep in mind that, list, that the listing agent and his or her entire brokerage are committed first and foremost to getting the best possible price for their home seller. In other words, uh, do you want to be negotiating against yourself? Number two, uh, don't feel pressured to make any open or long-term commitments. Uh, yes, legally, an agent can no longer show you a house without having a written agreement with you beforehand, but there are no prescribed per, uh, parameters for that agreement. Your agreement could literally, literally be for one house or one decade with an agent. If I have someone contact me that is coming into town on short notice to see homes and I haven't been working with that prospective buyer, I'm not going to ask them to sign an agreement to work with me for years or even months. Uh, I am going to limit my initial agreement with them to just those houses we see during their scouting trip most likely. Now I say initial intentionally because if both those buyers and I feel good about our working relationship after their initial trip, but uh, we don't find the right home for them on that first visit, I think it makes sense for us to commit to working together long term and we'll want to adjust our contract accordingly at that point. Uh, think of it as a low risk test drive for both sides uh, in a sense. Number three, you get what you pay for. I think this reminder goes hand in hand with number two. Uh, while I would hope and expect that the vast majority of clients I work with feel like they have a good sense of who I am before they ever contact me the first time, since they almost exclusively find their way to me as a result of either a happy client referral or via this channel, uh, that's not going to be the case for every agent client relationship. Framed a little differently, think about how or why you are speaking to this agent whom you are about to sign a contract with to represent you in one of the largest purchases of your lifetime. What do you know about them? What have they done to demonstrate their commitment to you? Uh, do you feel like your decision to work with them was an active one on your part, or do you feel like they are being thrust upon you in any way? The more you feel the latter, the more limited I would say any buyer broker agreement with them should be. Uh, at least initially, uh, or if at all, if you can help it. Number four, again, uh, budget accordingly. Per my other videos on this topic, there's a chance that some portion of your agent's compensation is going to come directly from you. Uh, this may not mean your total cost of purchase increases. It may just mean that the funds are allocated differently, uh, i.e. you pay a little bit more for a, a little less for a home, excuse me, than you otherwise would, but pay your agent more than zero. Uh, in any case, be sure that you, and ideally you and your agent, are running the right numbers before establishing your list of potential homes to see and consider. F number five, finally, on a minor logistical note, plan to head a little, uh, a little bit more, maybe just a little bit more. It is likely going to take a little more time to arrange showings since there is now less info available via the MLS and other channels. It's a new world out there in the real estate market, but contrary to some of what you may have seen or heard, uh, there is nothing that I think should be alarming to you as a buyer, nor as a seller. Uh, if anything, hopefully these changes will help add another layer of professionalism to the industry, but only time will tell if that impact or any others will come to fruition. As always, it would be my pleasure to help you to navigate your next home purchase or sale, so please don't hesitate to contact me anytime. Until then, thanks again for tuning in, subscribing, sharing, and liking, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.